We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today, Tennessee Governor Bill Lee. Governor, one other criminal justice reform question. During your State of the State speech, you talked about having a mentor program for people coming out of prison that have someone to sort of help them readjust themselves back to society. What's been the response for your call for volunteers on yeah. this? And is there some place people can go if they want to sign yeah. up or be involved? You know, we did, we did that because I, I've never thought government's the answer. When people, the people are the answer. This is a government of the people. And when we engage the people, that's really where we're going to see effective um, results. It's one of the reasons we also announced at State of the State the Office of Faith-Based and Community Initiatives to engage the private sector, to engage private citizens in addressing the greatest challenges of the day. We did announce a volunteer mentorship initiative. We haven't d fully fleshed that out. We don't have a website developed up, uh, up yet, and that plan's not in place. We just announced it that day. But um, when we, the volunteer state volunteers, things happen. And I know that, I have a great deal of belief in Tennesseans, and I know that they will be a real part of this solution. Knowing about being Tennessee, being the volunteer state as part of civics, you're also trying to put a, a renewed emphasis on that in the schools. Uh, the problem with civics programs, although they're badly needed today, it's who decides the curriculum. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing to make sure this isn't taken over by one side or the other? Yep. Because it's not just what you teach, it's what you leave out from the curriculum. Yep. Because you can't teach everything. That's right. So so we will develop, we're going to bring together, um, we're going to reward st st cl uh, schools that have a uh, strong civics program, but we're going to bring together the stakeholders, the parents, the teachers, educators, and together create what that is, what that appropriate civics um, class is. You know, there's been a lot of talk about how uh, a very the, the youngest demographic of adults has a greater belief that socialism is a more effective way to govern than capitalism. You know, if we don't teach kids the foundational principles and beliefs that made this country what it is and what the founding fathers intended when they created it. If we don't teach them, then they're not going to know. And we we move away from civics education. Kids don't know what why America is the, a remarkable experiment that has become the greatest um, country in the world for m multiple reasons. Getting back to one of the controversies up on the Hill, you met recently with one of the alleged sexual victims, Representative David mm -hmm. Byrd. Whatever happened was several years ago when he was a coach and a teacher, and this victim was was his coach, her coach in one of the, in one of her teams. She asked to meet with you. You get lots of people asked to meet with you. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to accept this and meet with her? Well, you know, first of all, let me just say it took a lot of courage for her to come to my office. I, I believe she to said come she, to my she office. She said she thought you believed what the story yeah. she told you. Did I was you believe glad it? she came. I, I had have said before that any time. Uh, that there are allegations, we have to take them very serious. Sexual misconduct in any form is not, toler is not tolerable and should not be tolerated in any workplace environment. So whenever there's, a, whenever there's an allegation, we, we take it very seriously. And I think people's voices need to be heard, alleged victims ought to be heard. And I said that, and so she reached out, and I was happy to meet with her in my office. That was just, just recently. Is there a process, a timeline, for where you'll consider what you've learned from this and then decide if there's any other actions or anything else you want to say about this matter? Well, there's a process, and that, and, I, and I've said before, we just recently met, and, and uh, I, I'm not, I don't want to comment on a private meeting. And, um, uh, but that process is underway. I'm processing that information. So you may yet take some additional power, have something else to say about it. Depends on what unfolds in the days ahead. Uh, during the campaign, another controversy on the Hill has always been the Nathan Bedford Forrest mm -hmm. bus there. You, at that point, you were opposed to removing it, saying it would be kind of whitewashing history. Mm -hmm. Most recently, though, you said you would like to put more context up mm -hmm. there around that. Not a lot of room in that part of the Capitol. What, do you, what, what kind hmm. of context do you have in mind that might be added up there to, uh, to keep that bus there or to remove it? Yeah. So I, I think I've been pretty consistent in saying I don't think we ought to remove, but I do think adding context is appropriate. And and we are, um, our plan is to put together a group of folks that will give, it's not just what I think ought to happen. There are, there's a historical commission, there is a building commission, but there are also community stakeholders that 
could have a lot more to say about what that ought to look like and how meaningful that might be, and those are the folks that I want to bring together. Uh, in our final minute or so, you may have a bill come into your desk pretty soon that would change the, uh, shorten the appeals process in capital punishment cases. What are your initial thoughts about signing such a bill if it comes to your desk? And uh, I assume you favor and will carry out the death penalty if one of those has to be comes to you and has yeah. to be executed while you're in office. I, I've said the death penalty is the law of the land in this state. It, as governor, it's my job to uh, to carry that out. So, in general, I'm I'm in favor of the death penalty. I think you have to look at every single case individually. Uh, this appeals process, we'll see where the legislature goes with that. I, it wasn't my bill. I didn't bring it forth. I'll be interested to see what the what the legal you, minds say around that. Do you think that. the appeals are too, the process takes too long right now? Should uh, it, it be shortened? It, it clearly takes too long. Taking that step out, whether it substantively changes the length of time, that would be interesting to know, but uh, it, it clearly takes too long to, from the time that crime is committed to uh, the time that the sentence is carried out. Final question, whether this bill or others come before you, I think I remember you saying you're going to set up a process where people can send you their thoughts and emails. That's right. That they can look and, when does that start? It's, it's started, so in in any time that there is a bill that is comes before my desk, there is a there is a place at in, in Tennessee.gov website that allows for public comment on any bill. And as we get those public comments, we read them. Governor Lee, thank you very much for coming on the show. Hope you'll be you. back again in the future. And thank you. Too, thank you. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. Hope you're back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics, in the meantime, go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. The new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye. <laughs>